Hi, and uh, welcome to the Lima Bravo Zero Fox Threat India YouTube channel. I am Morton, LB Zero Fox India. And today we're going to take a look at a really interesting place that I've driven past many times but never been to before. The Grimmiton Radio Station in southwestern Sweden. The Grimmiton Radio Station is an early long-wave transatlantic telegraphy station commissioned by the Swedish Parliament in 1921 for transatlantic communications due to transatlantic cables being cut during World War I. It was designed by the Swedish-American General Electric Chief Engineer Ernst Alexanderson and built between 1922 and 1924. The heart of the station is the Alexanderson alternator, which is water-cooled, and six 127-meter-tall antenna towers spaced 380 meters apart for the long-wave antenna. The antenna is well visible from the E6, E20 motorway, and that's the reason why I've driven past it several times. The station's location is no coincidence either. The placement on the west coast of Sweden is ideal for transmissions to pass entirely over water before reaching North America. The station opened in 1925 with the call sign Sierra Alpha Quebec and transmitted on 17.2 kHz to RCA in Long Island, New York with two Alexanders and alternators. The transmissions were fully automated with punch paper tapes. As time passed, the long-wave transmissions were slowly replaced with several short-wave transmitters and an array of antennas covering the globe, and in 1960, one of the Alexanderson alternators was removed to make room for more short-wave transmitters. During World War II, the facility proved its usefulness regarding its original purpose, and it was very important for transatlantic communications when transatlantic telegraphy cables were cut due to the war. Soldiers were stationed all around the area, the whole building was camouflaged, it was painted camouflage green. Um, they did their best to cover everything up with plants, they planted uh, like a lot of plants, uh, all the streets, the radio village, but of course it's not uh, easy to cover up those antennas, like how would you do that? Um, so what they did was they put up a lookout post in the first antenna, they um, built a shelter that they, that you can find their escape room. As other forms of communication evolved during the 20th century, the use of the station's original purpose grew more and more obsolete. The facility was inaugurated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2004 and it is the only operational electromechanical long-wave transmitter remaining in the world. The facility is still in use for several radio services today. The site itself consists of a welcome center with a cafe, a small exhibition with radio equipment and cellular phones, and a souvenir shop. Further on, there is a museum building where visitors can learn about the facility's history and radio communication in general. There is some degree of interactivity here, and kids and adults can try out Morse code, such as my daughter did. There is also an amateur radio shack on the facility, with the call sign Sierra Kilo 6 Sierra Alpha Quebec, but that was unfortunately not in operation when I visited the facility, so I had to look through the window. And last, but not least, there's the transmitter hall, 
housing the Alex Anderson alternator and several shortwave transmitters. You can even try to virtually start the transmitter yourself. Uh, the operator two will tell you which to push. My garden. Just do her. It go bra, I feel me. Let's go sleep in. Det gjorde så da. Det var fint å holde langt frambrukt da. Brukt fire minutter. Tre minutter, kanskje 26 sekunder. If you happen to pass by this area in southern Sweden, it is well worth a visit and a couple of hours of your time, even if you are not an amateur radio operator. It is truly a well-preserved piece of important world history. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video or any of my other videos. And until next time, 7-3.